Good morning, church, and welcome to worship this morning, and happy 4th of July weekend to you. I hope and pray that your weekend is full of celebration, is full of all of the beauty, celebrating the beauty and all the good that is in our country. And may God bless us as a country and as part of a global community. Amen? Amen. This morning, an announcement. Uh, as, as most of you know, next week, next Sunday, a week from today, Sunday, July 12th at 9.30. Sunday, July 12th at 9.30, a week from today, we will be gathering for the first time in four months. I can't believe it. Four months it's been since we've gathered together, and we will be worshiping together in our parking lot for a drive, our first drive-in worship next Sunday at 9.30. So please come. If you are able and if you are capable, um, again, I encourage you, if you are not feeling well, uh, to stay home. Uh, but if, you would, if you're coming, please come and there'll be ushers that will direct you in and out of the parking lot. And so it'll be a festive day. It'll be a joyous morning. And yes, it will be a brief service. And so uh, you can be assured of that. The service won't be as long uh, next Sunday. Praise be to God for that. And now, as we enter into our time of worship, we begin with a moment of silence, a moment of silence to ground and center ourselves for worship this morning. God bless us as we worship. So today's gospel is from Matthew chapter 11, verses 16 to 19, and verses 25 to 30. But to what will I compare this generation? You are like children, sitting in the marketplaces, calling out to each other. Look, we played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came, neither eating nor drinking, 
and you said, he has a demon. Then the son of man came eating and drinking. And they say, look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. After that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to children. For such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me and no one knows the son except God. And no one knows God except the son and anyone to whom the son chooses to reveal God. Come to me, all you who are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is the end of the gospel. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, you are great and greatly to be praised. You have made us for yourself and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Grant that we may believe in you, call upon you, know you and serve you and all people through your son, Jesus Christ, the savior of the world. Amen. Grace and peace to you from God, our creator, Jesus, our liberator, and the Holy Spirit, our comforter. Amen. In today's gospel reading, the one that we heard, just heard Mary share with us this morning, we hear Jesus sharing a parable. It's a parable that talks about children playing in the marketplace. And these children are misunderstood. The children play this, this happy song for their friends, but no one is dancing. And then they play this sad and mournful dirge. It's kind of like this funeral march. And no one mourns. No one is weeping. And Jesus goes on to say that in this parable that the children were misunderstood. Much like John the Baptist was misunderstood. Much like Jesus himself was misunderstood. Jesus, in this parable, is talking about the failure of society as a whole to understand and to act on the messages that he and then John the Baptist were talking about and had been preaching about throughout their respective ministries. And oh, the, no doubt that their messages were pretty loud and clear. They were extremely and abundantly clear. But really, society, the, the entire generation, as Jesus puts it, was cold to their message. The people had been given every opportunity to hear it, but they rejected it. They refused to listen to them. Now, John, and, John the Baptist and Jesus couldn't have been more opposite in the way they approached their message. John... The Baptist, for instance, shows up on the scene as this eccentric person who likes to eat bugs and locusts and honey and wore animal skin for clothing. And we would today, we would definitely, definitely see him as, as being a rather odd person, a very weird person, so to speak. And, and he would call, in his ministry, he would call some of his listeners a brood of vipers and shouting a message of hardcore repentance, calling people to repentance. But the people complained about him. People complained about John the Baptist. Some of them even labeled John the Baptist as demon-possessed. Jesus, on the other hand, 
shows up as a person who feasted with and ate and drank and partied with all sorts of people and, and really all the wrong people for that matter. Jesus came announcing the kingdom of God has come, the good news of God, that God is love, the good news of a God who is all about this unsettling and unexpected and ever-widening inclusiveness. Jesus came healing and performing all of these acts of miracles, yes, but the people refused to still, still refused to listen to him. Some even called him, called Jesus a glutton and a drunkard. They misunderstood Jesus to the point of executing him on a cross. Now people find all sorts of ways to justify why they are offended at the words of John the Baptist and Jesus. And so they avoid the kind of life both, them, both of them were calling people to. Yes, John and Jesus both were misunderstood and their, their call to living a life that truly mattered was not only avoided, people ran away from it. Instead, Falling in line with a way of life that spoke more about status quo of power and strength than about love and mercy. Not so different than today, is it? Much of the time, you and I, we, we fail to understand this Jesus. We misunderstand Jesus. We give into and we fall prey to some of the similar trappings of the messages that come in our directions from our culture today. Those selfish ideas of individualism, of, of success, of money and power and control. And oh, by the way, pull yourself up by your own bootstraps. And we've given into a belief system that tells us that strength and might And if we just have enough willpower, it's going to solve all of our problems. How often do we give in to the power-hungry voices of our world, just like people did in Jesus' time, who tell us to believe that, don't, that we don't need to care for those most vulnerable among us because it costs too much money. It will upset the status quo. And so we throw away those whom Jesus called the least of these, even, even though that might mean that they go homeless, even though that might, they might go without health care, even though they might go hungry. How often do we give in to the narcissistic, self-centered voices around us who tell us that it's okay to exclude, not to welcome the other, not to listen to the voices of those on the margins of society, to avoid the truth that we are all swimming in this culture of racism so much so that we don't even realize it, and where we cut off others out of the picture, whether it's on a global scale, whether it's in our own country, or even in our own community. How often do we miss the moments of life that really matter? As a colleague of mine once said about this, which I think is, a po is powerful, referring, she's referring to the parable Jesus gave of those children in our text today. She says, how often do we dance when we ought to mourn for a world whose burden is heavy? How often do we dance when we should weep for so many people who need rest? People of God, all those things that get our attention in our world, all those things that we think are important in life, in God's kingdom, are barely noticed. In fact, we are freed from them in God's kingdom. And what we discover is in what Jesus says in his prayer, 
in our text that, that the blessings of God are hidden from the wise. They're hidden from those in power, hidden from those in the high class. Instead, it's the infants, it's the children of this world, those who are the most vulnerable. They are the ones who best understand the ways of God. You see, only the vulnerable are able to identify their deep need. And when we are vulnerable enough to identify this need inside of ourselves, the need of God's presence in our lives, it also means, some, means something has got to change within us. Something has got to die within us. We've got to let it go. And it's only then that we will be changed. Oh, I, I know this to be true for, for many of you, as it is for myself as well. It's scary. And we fear change in our lives because it means that we have to face our own messed up selves. We've got to face the truth about ourselves, the way that we are, and the way that we are in the world. We've got to let go of some things that have brought ourselves and other people hurt. And at the same time, the truth of the matter is, in doing so, it is good news, is that at the same time, we will be made new. The hard stuff, the hard truth of life in Christ is that you can't enter into it. You can't become part of what Jesus is up to in the world without being changed yourself. Without recognizing your need for Jesus, which then in turn means our lives will be changed. The truth is, is that God's forgiveness, God's love, God's grace, God's mercy is more powerful, is most powerful, most meaningful to those who acknowledge their brokenness and acknowledge their own messiness. And Jesus knows that this kind of message won't be very attractive to the self-made person. It is, but it is good news unbelievably and incredibly good news to those who know their own brokenness, can admit their need, and who turn to God who knows us, who understands us, and who accepts us. So this weekend, at a time when we as a country are celebrating our strength and our might and our power. We need to, yes, absolutely give thanks for all that is good in our lives and all that is good and beautiful in our country, but also at the same time, we need to face our deep brokenness and our deep messed up, messed up selves as individuals as families, as communities, as a country, and as a world, and lay all of that at the foot of the cross. And lay all of that before God. Because, my friends, it is in Jesus that we discover a God who not only enters into a messed up world that is so preoccupied with power and control, and we discover a God who is willing to understand, or excuse me, to that oh, God who is willing to be misunderstood and become vulnerable, even to the point of death on the cross. And it's all because it's all because of God's deep love for a hurting world. My friends, in Christ, in Christ we are called to turn again and again to the God of the universe who walks with us in our struggles, who knows us and knows our pain, and is with us in our deepest longings. You and I, 
we are called to turn. Turn again to the one who says to us, and I love this translation from the message translation of the Bible. Hear those words from Jesus. Are you tired? Worn out? Are you burned out on religion? All of you, come to me. Get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and walk, work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. These words that can touch the deepest part of our souls, the deepest part of our being. And when we allow that to happen, when we give space for that to happen, we will truly begin to understand. We will truly discover that we are known, that we are loved, that we are accepted, and understood by a God who is love. And this God, this God will lead us into wholeness. This God that will lead us into a life that truly matters. My friends, this is good news. It's good news for you, it's good news for me, it's good news for the world. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. We pray for the church. O God, sustain us as we share your word. Embrace us as we struggle to find our common ground, our common vision. Lift up leaders with powerful and prophetic voices. Free us from a stagnant faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, we pray for the well-being of creation. Protect the air, water, and land from abuse and pollution. 
free us from apathy in our care for creation and direct us towards sustainable living. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, we pray for the nations, especially the United States, as we celebrate our nationhood. Guide leaders in developing just policies and guide at difficult conversations. Free us from all that hinders relationship building with others. Lead us to expansive love for our neighbor. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, we pray for all in need, for all who are tired, for all who are feeling despair, sick, ill, or oppressed. Take their yoke upon you and ease their burdens. Give your consolation and free us from all that keeps us bound. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is the Savior of the world. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now, my friends, receive the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you with grace and with mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.